Morning all. Uh, so this is day two of the tour. I completely forgot to film anything or take any pictures uh, on day one, apart from this photograph of the wonderful Jack Kendrick who played last night. He absolutely killed it. He was uh, superb. And he's playing again tonight at Sheffield. But before we go to Sheffield, uh, I'm going to go for a morning walk. There you go. <laughs> just, just to prove that we have actually gone <laughs> for a fucking walk. Yeah, absolutely. Hello again. Me and Jamie have parted ways and I've made my way north. But it's too early to go to Sheffield already because I can't check into my hotel yet. So I've decided to go and try and find the Nine Ladies Stone Circle. So yeah, me and Jamie have already walked about four miles already at Bradgate Park, just outside Leicester. But now I'm up here in the Derbyshire Dales Look at this, like mad cliffs and stuff. And I've just seen some old millstones. So we must be somewhere where there was once a mill. This is good chat, good content. Well, there you go. The Nine Lady Stone Circle. It's very windy up here on top of a big hill, somewhere just outside Matlock. Welcome to Sheffield. Welcome to the Greystones, the back room. So called because it is a back room. You feeling it? Yeah, we're getting there. We're getting there. <laughs> Hello. It's now Saturday. Yesterday in uh, Sheffield was just spectacular. So much fun. Great crowd. Lovely venue. No complaints. I've now driven south a couple of hours. I have come to Kinber Edge, just outside Stourbridge, where apparently there is a hill fort. I love me a hill fort. And something called the Rock Houses. Not entirely sure what that is. Uh, I'm assuming it's houses in rock. Just got to the top of the hill at Kinber Edge and to be rewarded with a very lovely view. Check this out. Pretty rad view from the other side of the hill as well. I found a signpost this way. Here we go then, rock houses. I'm kind of hoping there's some sort of information display board which explains why there are houses in the rocks. Well, that was fun. And welcome to Stourbridge. Here we are at Katie Fitzgerald's. really mad to think that it's 27 years since they died. I have arrived in Bridgewater and I'm going to go for a little walk. A 
I'm not going to do my usual big walk today. I only have, well, should be loading in about now really. But I'm just going to get half an hour of brisk walking in, bit of exercise. Show you some of the beautiful sights of Bridgewater. There you go, I've had my walk, I've had a shower, and now I'm at the wonderful cobblestones. Although they've had some new addition to the decor. Morning all. It is now Thursday. Yesterday in Bridgewater didn't sell many tickets, but the people who did come were bloody lovely and we had a lovely old time of it. This morning I've taken myself down to Exmouth, Exmouth, and uh, this is where I did a photo shoot once with Dolian many years ago, and there were very big dog prints on the floor. Tonight I am playing in Exeter at the Cavern, and uh, we sold a lot of tickets for tonight, so I think tonight's going to be a bit raucous. Very much looking forward to it. We've got Bradley the Busker supporting. Uh, and that's all I have to say about that. Anyway, look, this is, uh, this is shit content. Check out these rocks. Aren't they nice? Again, great content. I'll tell you something, it's a good crack doing these walks. Uh, on every day of the tour because like just the other day I was in Derbyshire Dales walking up massive hills looking for the stone circles and now I'm walking on Exmouth Beach at low tide with no real plan about when I'm going to stop it's just bloody lovely I think I'm going to walk to there and then head back I reckon by the time I get to those cliffs I'll have done about an hour so I'll head back can you hear that? Well, I'm walking towards something called Straight Point Rifle Range. I guess it's a military training area. Lots of gunfire going off. Here we go then. I reckon I've done about a mile and a half walking. And uh, now I'm going to go up that and then walk back to where I came from, but along the southwest coast path, which goes on the top of the cliffs. Oh no, the bar is closed. This is terrible news. There's a gunfire going off, and yet there's a massive caravan park. A weird place to come for a holiday. I swear I am following the signs, but I am now just in a caravan park. There you go, found a sign. I've managed to find my way back up to the uh, southwest coast path. I'm going along the top of the cliffs now. Uh, I marked all these picturesque bushes. <laughs> That is a very, very tall cliff, and that is the edge there. <laughs> the call of the void, man. I did not like this. <laughs> Found a weird thing. Like, what the fuck is that? I think I'm nearing the end of my walk. The van's down there somewhere. So yeah, not a massive walk by any stretch, but three miles-ish. Um, but it's been beautiful and coastal, and it's, I feel like I've done some exercise. So, you know, better than no walk at all, right? Hello, welcome to the cavern, Exeter.
Raining. I've come to the wonderful Roche Rock or Roche Rock or don't know how don't know how you say it, but it looks like this. Well, there you go. I climbed up into the church thing on the rock thing. I'm not really sure why it's there or anything, but I did climb up the high thing, which considering I'm scared of heights, it's pretty good. Um, yeah, oh, and it's very typically Cornish. Inside the church up there, there's uh, a smash bottle of Rattler. There you go, Roast Rock, built in 1409, dedicated to St. Michael, been abandoned for at least 250 years, and that is about all we know. I've got many hours to kill before I can check into my hotel in Truro. So I thought I'd come for a little walk on the beach. I ventured north, and I am, well, North Cornwall anyway. This is Portreath. <laughs> lovely, lovely walking on pretty deserted beaches in the autumn. So I think a few weeks ago almost, this place would have been absolutely heaving with tourists. And welcome to the Old Bakery Studios, Truro. Let me show you around. It's, uh, it's Saturday and I've driven myself up to the Rough Tor car park because I'm going to climb up Rough Tor and Brown Willie, Cornwall's highest thing. Um, and I've just arrived at the car park and it's just started to absolutely arse it down with rain. So I'm going to give it a minute. There we go, it stopped raining. But I'll tell you something, this is the first time this autumn that it's actually felt a bit cold. It's only like nine degrees here, because I guess we're up on the hills. Um, yeah, this is the first time I've had to put the winter coat and the winter hat on. There's no actual path as such that I can see, but there is just sort of a suggestion of a path. There's also some cows. I'm going to stay away from the cows. Cows are evil. Evil and tasty. You know, I said about there not being a path. I was wrong. This row of stones seems to lead all the way up there. I'm wondering. I'm wondering. Is the row of stones a modern addition to mark the path so that people don't traipse around on all the farmland? Is the row of stones an ancient thing? Hmm. Okay, I've just looked on the OS map and uh, I think the stoneworks around here are all ancient. There's a mark down on the map as settlement. Um, so yeah, they must just be remnants of old farmsteads or something from the past. There's a really clearly defined settlement marked out a big square. Of 
little rough tour. Big rough tours over there. Brown Willie is that one over there. But judging by how uh, knackered my legs are and my lungs are from just walking up to this one, I don't think I'm gonna be able to do that one today. It's gonna to take me too long and I've got to get to Biddeford. Yeah, I mean, to get up to the top of that, I gotta do the walk I've just done all over again and then some. And my legs aren't up to it, not today. This is the top of Rough Tour. It's very windy. Look, the weather has turned. That looks to me like an old animal pen or a burial chamber or the remnants of a house or it's just a pile of stones. <sighs> Fuck my old boots out with a walk and a half. I thought you'd about three miles, but a lot of it was up and then quite a lot of it was down. Very steep and potentially ankle breaky. I have now made my way up to Devon and instead of going straight to Biddeford I've decided to uh, pop into Westwood Ho, park up in the Burroughs car park. Look at this place. Look at that. Isn't that cool? Like the town's over there on the left, there's some watery thing on the right and over the pebbles is the sea. I'm just going to park up here I think. Welcome to Biddeford, the Palladium Club. You know we This is the Crooked Crowbar. Ivinghoe Beacon. So here we go then, this is Ivinghoe Beacon. This is the official start or end of the Ridgeway, uh, depending on which way round you walk it. Rain's really coming in now. Yeah, the whole reason I do these walks is well, partly physical health, but obviously like mental, mental health wise. Um, it does sort of reset your brain a bit. You know, I'm not really one for exercises as such. I don't really like going to the gym and I, I can't really run with my knees and my ankle. But walking, getting out into nature, it's just something about it. It just, it just gets my head right. You can just about see, that's where I've parked. Oh, don't focus on my finger phone. That's where I parked, that's uh, that car park there. And I've walked all the way around here, up to Ivinghoe Beacon, which is there. And now I'm over here, 
lovely views. I think I'm going to end up all the way down the end of this ridge, and I think it probably goes down and then along. I think it's that path there it takes me back over towards the car park. All in all, probably about 45 minutes to an hour's walk, depending on how fast I go. But it's, uh, yeah, just enough to get the blood pumping. I'll tell you something though, these chalk hills are slippery as fuck. Come down off the hill now. Um, been up there somewhere. Making my way back towards the car park, I guess now. Great chat. I know it probably doesn't look that steep on camera, but that last little bit of this walk is a very steep incline. Oh, good. <laughs> Dog friend. Hello. Hi. I just crossed over the Icknield Way, the oldest road in Britain, apparently. I'm about halfway up the steep incline, and I'm buggered. All right, that was a lovely walk up Ivinghoe Beacon. I've now driven an hour and a half south, and I'm just outside Guildford at a place called Chilworth Gunpowder Mills. I've just been learning all about the uh, gunpowder mills. 1625 is when they dug all this, and apparently all these water features, all these ponds and channels, not canals as such, they were all dug out in order to pipe the water in to the right places for the mill's usage. Uh, so what looks like a natural woodland is entirely man-made. 1625 it started. All to do with the East India Company. Yeah, those pricks. And then carried on going right into the 1900s. That's a very strange place. I like strange. Hello, it's a Saturday. It is raining. Storm Babe is still kicking England's and Scotland's respective butts. Um, but I have driven south from Guildford where I had a lovely gig last night. It was brilliant. Uh, I've driven south and I've stopped off before I go to Brighton. Uh, I've stopped off at the Devil's Dyke, which is on recommendation on from uh, Mark Booth. Thank you very much, mate. However, it is less than ideal weather conditions up here today. It is very windy, it's very wet, the clouds are very low. So I'm not gonna get much of a view, but I am still gonna go for a walk. Um, so I'm just gonna have a bite to eat, and then I'm gonna head out into the, the wild, windy-ness of it all. So it is raining, but it's also sunny. Good old British weather. It's a really, 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 really big hill, this. So it's a long way down. It's probably far too windy to film myself talking to you. Um, but I think that big sort of slice in the land, I think that's what they refer to as Devil's Dyke. And uh, that's all I know. I can see the seaside. I uh, found a thing. Welcome to a very windy, stormy Brighton. You have been told. some weird shit on tour. And welcome to the Brunswick in Hove.
I'm lurking backstage here in Hove and uh, just wanted to say that's the end of this uh, week's bit of video in because I'm not going to film myself playing my gig. Um, join me again next week for uh, the northern bit. Well, good morning. It is the 26th of October, Thursday, and I'm heading up to Manchester. I mean, it is the 26th of October, but it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas because the Christmas sandwiches are in the shops. There's three trips to the car and back and one parking ticket later and I'm here in the wonderful Gulliver's. I had forgotten the amazing nature of the Gulliver's dressing room and all the amazing band names. Well, good morning. Last night's gig in Manchester was lovely. I have now gotten up nice and early, driven about an hour and a half north, and you find me in the beautiful village of Malham. And I'm gonna walk four and a half mile circular walk, taking in Gordale Scar and Malham Cove. Just say good morning to that bloke. Completely ignored me. <laughs> Don't know why I bother. Look at that. That is apparently what is known as Janet's Foss. I don't know who Janet is, but that's her Foss. Dog friend. Apparently Janet was the queen of the local fairies and she used to live in a cave behind the waterfall. Now we know. That guy is the second person I've said good morning to who has completely ignored me. This place is absolutely beautiful and something tells me I haven't even seen the best bit yet. Yes, I was quite right. I haven't seen the best bit yet. This might just be the best bit. It's a pretty imposing thing. So according to the map, the OS map, the footpath does go up the waterfall and on, up onto the tops. Um, I'm not saying I'm an unlucky person. I just think that if I were to attempt to attempt what he's attempting, I think that would be the end of the tour and my life. I have to say that that is a very conveniently placed snack van. There you go, Malham Cove. Um, I'm not getting any closer to the edge than that. <laughs> Over here on this plateau uh, is, I think, where they filmed a bit of one of the Harry Potter films. I've decided to come the anti-clockwise way around this walk, which means going down 400 and something stone steps. Everyone else seems to be doing it the other way and they're huffing and puffing, going up the 400 steps. Sod that. That's crazy. So the water just oozes out of the ground there, flows off underneath. That. And on down there. Well, that was hands down the best walk of the tour so far. I mean, just look at that thing. About, I've done another about 35, 40 minutes drive north from where I was, just because it was a thing I've always wanted to see in the flesh, as it were. This is the Ribblehead Viaduct. Bye, ducks go. Top three. I mean, obviously the Glen Finnan one in Scotland's got to be number two. What would number one be? What are your top three viaducts? <laughs> Pop your answers in the comments below. No. I think number one viaduct would be the one that James Bond is on and he gets shot by money pen and he falls off and he lands in the water. Uh, but he's fine, don't worry. Spoilers alert, James Bond is fine and, until the most recent film when he's not. The river. These are the Aesgarth Falls. This is the river where Kevin Costner had a fight with that big lad. Whew. Well, that was a hell of a day off. I'm absolutely shattered. I've walked about 10 miles, seen some really beautiful stuff. And now I've made my way to Pateley Bridge where I'm staying at my friend's hotel. Um, the beautiful Harefield Hall and I'm going to stay here now. I'm done. I'm so tired. 
I'm gonna have dinner here and then go to bed. Look at this view though. Morning. It's foggy. Well, I'm here at Colstone's Cut, which is a art installation on top of a hill overlooking a quarry. But in this absolute soup, I'm not gonna see a thing. But I did want to come visit it anyway. So even though I'm not going to, be able to see the view, or the quarry, or the art installation, I'm still going to have a walk around anyway and try not to fall off a cliff. You remember that scene at the beginning of the labyrinth, where the girl's talking to the little worm in the wall? Don't go that way. Never go that way. If she had gone that way, we would have led straight to the Goblin Castle. Off that edge there is a massive quarry. Well, there we go, that was it. The cold stone's cut. I love it. Although it's creepy as hell, but I'm going back to the van. And I've got like five hours to kill before I have to be in Newcastle, which is only an hour and a half from here. So I'm going to find some more stuff to look at in the fog. I found something cool to do, and it's really atmospheric in the fog. Welcome to Brimham Rocks. So I've driven about another half an hour further north from where I was at Brimham Rocks and I'm now at somewhere called Swinton Bivouac to see a Druid's Temple. I think that Swinton Bivouac sounds like a posh man. Hello, my name's Bivouac. Swinton Bivouac. There is the, the Druid's Temple. I've wanted to come here for so long. It's properly weird. Now I know this place isn't a real Druid's temple. It was made by the landowners sometime in the Victorian era, I think. But it's still weird. It's still weird to think what they might have got up to here. And after a lovely day of mooching about in the fog, here I am in Newcastle at the head of steam. I had no idea that you could walk around York City walls on the walls. It's ace. Greetings and welcome to the Spaced House. That's right, it's London tonight. I've got Oxton Thief with me. Hello. Let's go and get a drink. And, and not Tim and Daisy and Brian? No, they don't want to come out. They don't want to come out. Brian never goes Fuck out. Fuck them. Patience is a virtue. What's the point in agency? Slow down. Aces Hates in London. I barely filmed anything today. Sorry. Da 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 Hello everyone, and after a day of lovely admin, uh, Barry and I have made our way to the wonderful Trowbridge, or Tro Vegas, as it's known around here. Uh, we've just checked into our hotel, and now we're going to go to the pub for a lovely pint. Oh, 
Let's go. Cool. Yeah. Or no, let's talk about it more. For anybody who doesn't want to pay to see Stonehenge, park at Lark Hill, walk south down the byway, walk up as far as the bus access road, and then just before you go into the bit where you have to pay, there's a little gate here. You can turn left and it's a public footpath that takes you to the stones for free. Public service done. <laughs> the lady in the tabard manning the actual gate into Stonehenge just asked us if we had tickets or wristbands, and we just said, no we don't need them because this is a public footpath. It's just over there. This bench, there's no security. I'm going for it. I had to buy new trainers because I forgot my walking boots and then they got my old trainers got muddy. So I got new trainers. Welcome to the Winchester Gate in Salisbury. The glasses off, you never see through the smog. Yes, I understand that you are lost. Well, hello there. Welcome back to week six of the Morning Walking Club tour. I'm just heading out. I'm on my way to Bedford to play Esquires. I'm playing in the downstairs room. Koshin are playing in the upstairs room. Remember them? Uh, so yeah, Bedford, Colchester tomorrow, and then back across to Cambridge on Saturday. Week six, here we go. Hello, um, I have arrived safely in Bedford. Checked into my hotel, uh, and I'm gonna head to the venue, but I don't know what time for. Um, they haven't told me what time loading is. It's usually four, but sometimes it's five. And I don't want to be there at four. In case it's five, then I'm just sitting in the car park for an hour. I don't want to be there at five if it's four, because then I'll be an hour late. And I don't like being late. So that was interesting, wasn't it? And welcome to Esquires in Bedford. I even got my name on the thing. Backstage at Bedford Esquires. Uh, I'm on in like one minute, so this is the last bit of filming I'll do today. Uh, I'll see you in the morning. Morning. It's, uh, it's Friday, and uh, I've woken up quite late for me, uh, like 10 o'clock, <laughs> really late. Um, so well, I'm going to go for a big walk today. I've had a few stretches to some nice places, but if I'm completely honest with you, I can't be asked. But there's a couple of places I want to visit on the way to Colchester. So, I'm going to go see them first, and then when I get to Colchester, uh, figure out what I'm going to do then. I might do the Roman Walls walk of Colchester. Apparently that's quite good, and visit the castle. Because apparently there's a bit of like, like you can see the floor level where Boudicca burnt the castle down, however many years ago that was. That's pretty interesting. I'm going to do that. Yeah, let's do that. But first, I'm going to go and visit TTT Motorcycle Village. There you go. Look at some bikes.
I used to have a poster of that car on my wall when I was a boy. I've never seen one in real life. Well, that place was an absolute hidden gem. If you're ever in Sudbury, visit TTT Motorcycle Village. Insane. Yep, I have been incredibly lazy today. I have done absolutely no walk-in, taken a leisurely drive, and now I'm in Colchester. Checked into my beautiful hotel, look at the beautiful curtains. <coughs> Always go Premier in. why didn't I go Premier in? Uh, and I've got like two hours before load in, although I've actually loaded in already because they very kindly let me pull up outside earlier, chuck everything in, and then go and park miles away. There is no parking anywhere near here. Anyway, I'm gonna go for a bit of a wander. Probably gonna go Colchester Castle. It's the world's biggest hotel room with the world's tiniest TV. Just for uh, scale, that's the remote. I do rather enjoy a nice museum. You know I'm going to have to have a go at this. <laughs> oh shit, I'm actually steering them. No way! I'm actually steering them. <laughs> and welcome to the Three Wise Monkeys in Colchester. Uh, since the last time I was here, they've moved the stage from there, where the merch is, to there, where the stage is. And it's a uh, shitload better I mean it was good anyway but it's loads better now um, support tonight is a guy called Jack Walsh who was the first time I've met him tonight he's really good uh, so that'll be fun to watch him and then I'm gonna play and then we'll get some lovely booze in I think because I haven't got to drive anywhere tonight which is a nice change of pace for this tour I've done absolutely no walking today well I walked around the castle and then I walked around Colchester for a bit but other than that I've got bugger all steps in <laughs> proper lazy day anyway um, that's it. Oh look, we're in Cambridge. <laughs> Doggies, burgers, sides. <laughs> No, yeah, that sounds perfect. Yeah, that sounds that sounds that sounds huge. Oh hi, welcome to the Paul and Arms in Cambridge. It's these sides. Reasons to always stay in a Premier Inn. Number 423. This is the Waterman pub in Cambridge and watch this. Kettle, bathroom. Kettle, bathroom. Kettle, sink. Now, not bit funny, but uh, how the fuck are you going to fill that up with water? Always stay in a Premier Inn. 
welcome to week seven, I think. Six or seven, I don't know. Week something of the Morning Walking Club tour. Today I'm on my way to the wonderful Mars Bar in Worcester. And seeing as I'm going to Worcester, it is an ideal opportunity to go for a lovely walk around the Malvern Hills. So I'm leaving a bit early to A, beat the Friday traffic, and B, go to Malvern on the way to Worcester. Hello again. And welcome to the Malvern Hills. I've parked up at uh, North Quarry Car Park, I think that's what it's called, Tank Quarry Car Park. And I'm walking up a fucking steep hill. It's definitely getting me out of breath. But I'm walking up through all this um, abandoned quarry business. So if you look here behind me, there's some sort of pathway that goes off down there. And she goes off up there. I'm wondering whether it was the, like an old trackway for the carts. You know, like a little railway type thing. Who knows? Anyway, I am going up there. The downside to this is it's incredibly steep. Uh, but the upside is the sun is right in my eyes. So I can't tell how far this hill goes. As I huff and puff to the top of this hill, I think I'm going to get the reward of the view. Whoa. beautiful up here um, but I reckon I'm done now it was the longest walk but it was bloody steep so it felt longer so if I turn around and head back down now I'll probably have done about three miles or so and that'll do considering how steep it was I've earned myself a lovely pint this is a fun path I've chosen <laughs> I think this is a mountain biking track it's bloody steep I always try and do circular walks where I can, um, just because I think it's more interesting than retracing the steps I've already made. But also in the case of this one, the way up was so steep, I figured the way down from somewhere other, somewhere other than there would be less so. I was fucking wrong. Yeah, what I've done, instead of reading the map more carefully, I followed my nose and therefore the wrong way down a mountain biking track which is super steep and I can't go back up now but the way I see it mountain bikes can get down here so can people just at this speed I know it doesn't look very steep on camera but that's why I've just slid down about half a mile of it and there's the path I should have been on <laughs> oh well down we go no one died there you go that's me done um, I've been going for about an hour, maybe an hour and a half, and at my speeds on these hills, it's probably about two and a half, three miles. In an hour, I'd normally do about four miles, I think, but on the flat. So yeah, I guess two or three, but steep up and steep down. So my legs are burning, my lungs are burning, my blood is pumping. Welcome to the Mars Bar. the Good morning, everybody. It is Saturday. Worcester last night was an absolute treat, as it always is. Uh, thank you to everyone who came, and especially thank you to everyone who bought snoots. Big snoot town, Worcester. I barely sold a single snoot on my whole snoot and tour. And in Worcester last night, I got sold all the snoots I had with me. It was a total snoot fest. A little bit of an update. We have just clocked over the 3,000 mile mark on this tour. 
and welcome to the Frog and Fiddle in Cheltenham. Yes, this is the legendary backstage area at the Frog and Fiddle. Every band who's ever played here and their mums have signed the walls, including those prats. This is how you get into the venue bit. Isn't that lovely? So I'm just hiding backstage here at the Frog and Fiddle because I'm on in a minute. Uh, and that's the last thing I'll film today. Uh, tomorrow I shall take you uh, to full band rehearsals for the Christmas gig. That'll be fun. So I'll see you tomorrow. Good morning everybody. After a fucking ace gig last night in Cheltenham. I don't know why it was just so good. It was just so good. The crowd were on absolutely top form. Probably the loudest to sing along on the tour so far. I say so far because we haven't had Swindon yet and we haven't had Nottingham yet and we haven't had Bristol yet. I have a funny feeling that they'll probably be the loudest sing-alongs. But I'm prepared to stand corrected. Anyway, it's now Sunday morning. Far too early considering the late night I had after driving home from last night's gig. <coughs> but we've got a full day of full band rehearsals today. So I'm driving over to John's studio where the band are going to meet me with a bit of luck and we're going to run through the new songs songs from the new album and it's, this is the first and only time uh, we're going to get to run through the new stuff before the Christmas gig at the police and I can't wait to see the boys uh, I can't wait to play some songs and I can't wait to have a, an inevitable KFC everybody wave to the camera One and only bad practice. some D's when I might be the only one. <laughs> I, was, I was slipping some D's in. I think. Well, did I, you did try, I did try it on the record yesterday. I was like, don't say it, don't say it, don't say it. <laughs> Well, there you go, then, folks. That's what.
was a very long day of rehearsals, but a very necessary one. Not that we're rusty or anything, but like just the new stuff. It was really good to get that played. The band have absolutely nailed it. As far as I'm concerned, they're such good players. I'm very lucky and without a doubt, the weak link in that chain. Um, they're just amazing. Uh, I can't wait for the, for the Bristol gig now. I'm absolutely stoked to play it. It's got a good set. It's a new set. It's a brand new set of uh, quite a lot of the new album but also plenty of old favourites. Um, so yeah, that's this weekend done and dusted now. Hello lovely patrons and uh, welcome to week eight of the tour. Um, this week has been struck with some vehicle trouble. This is an old familiar story, isn't it? Um, so a couple of months ago my van started showing up a warning light um, saying the DPF filter needed cleaning, so I had that done. Then the warning light came back on. So we did a forced regen on the DPF and then the light came back on. So I took it in to a friend of mine, mechanic, who took it all apart and put it back together again, cleared the codes, and the next day the light came back on. Uh, so I eventually booked it in with Ford because no one could figure out what was wrong with it, even though this was always gonna cost me more than, uh, more than an arm and a leg. Uh, I booked it in with Ford. Um, they said that it was a NOx sensor, so they replaced that. It cost £500 to replace a sensor. And I drove it away, and a few miles later, the light came back on. So, um, I've taken it back to Ford uh, this week, and they have told me now that the catalytic converter has died, and it's going to cost two and a half grand to repair. Now, I can't believe that a van that's only done 45,000 miles has this much going wrong with it. And I feel like... I just feel like I'm being done. I mean, it just feel oddly coincidental that a few months ago I took the van in for its big service and then all this stuff has started going wrong since then. I'm not suggesting for a moment that Ford are doing this on purpose, but it's all a bit fishy to me. Anyway, the van is still in with Ford. I'm waiting for them to call me because I've asked them to uh, to find a way of doing it cheaper. Um, so anyway, it's just sitting with them. So today, to get to Glastonbury, Southampton and Swindon, I have had to hire this, this uh, beautiful little VW T Guayro Tyro. It's a VW, um, and it works. So that's the main thing. But going forward, I think I need once again to get a new vehicle, which I can't afford to do. Oh, this is uh, like I say, a very familiar story. Welcome to Glastonbury. So yeah, I've just got to Glastonbury. I've checked into my beautiful old hotel. This is the George and Pilgrims. It's from like 1435 or something. And it's all wonky and the bed's on the piss and it's probably haunted uh, if you believe in that sort of thing, which I don't. Uh, and it's just lovely. So I've checked in. I'm gonna go over to the pub, find out what time loading is at the venue. Welcome to the King Arthur in Glastonbury. If you've not been here before, this is a cool venue. And I think you should make a point of coming down here because it's fucking ace. Really lovely old pub with a perfectly built gig room out the back. Look at it, it's brilliant. Touring alone is very boring, sir. It's two and a half hours till the doors open. Two and a half hours. I have nothing to do, no one to talk to. <laughs> Just me and my thoughts. lovely patrons. Uh, it's Friday. I have uh, woke up rather hungover. I have made my way to Southampton and I've just checked into my hotel which is 30 seconds walk from the venue and I've got this enormous bloody room. It's like I've got a sofa as big as the, the room and the windows floor to ceiling and I've even got a little kitchen. This is crazy. Massive telly. Yes, this will do. I approve. <laughs> Haven't done this much on this tour. Hunting for the oldest pub in whatever town I'm in. I'm in Southampton, and apparently the oldest pub is this one. Oh, 
This is the reason I always Google oldest pub wherever I am and go there rather than to a chain pub. Look at this place. Welcome to the biggest venue of the entire tour, the 1865. Cause I can see a feeling sorry for myself I try and write a song Some people lost And I'm feeling stressed First frost of the winter. I came in like a wrecking ball. Hello everyone, it is now Saturday and I'm in Swindon, hometown gig. And yesterday's beautiful cultural visit to a very old pub uh, has been equally topped, I think. It's certainly been topped today uh, because I'm here at the very cultural Boom Battle Bar. <laughs> this weekend's shenanigans and I'm home after a gig rather than in a hotel after the gig which is just lovely I've got cheese on toast and a glass of wine I won't go to bed after that oh. well hello everyone you join me here at Hotwood Park Services this is the final week of the tour welcome to Cafe Indy in Scumford it's George Gadd Well, there we go. That was uh, Cafe Indy in Scunthorpe. Um, I didn't film any of my gig, obviously, um, but it was actually brilliant. Like, um, people were few in number, but loud of voice, so you can't complain. It, it was such a lovely gig. So thank you very much, Scunthorpe. I had a lovely time. Morning, all. Welcome to a very frosty Scunthorpe. Uh, got to go to Wakefield now to pick up some bobolats and then down to Nottingham. Morning. And here we are in Nottingham, finally. Me and the Gad Cheers. are about to enjoy a lovely Christmassy burger uh, and then go on a lovely moochy mandate around Nottingham. George is taking me up the tunnel. <laughs> So the original requirement was for a tunnel with a maximum gradient of 1 in 14. The tunnel actually has a gradient of 1 in 12, considered too great for horse-drawn carriages. So this is too steep for horse-drawn carriages. Wait, how do you carve into a limestone like that? Welcome to Nottingham, the Bodega. Just want to let you all know how fancy uh, things are here in Nottingham, the Bodega. Uh, in all of the gigs on the tour so far, I have not been given a tablecloth for the merch until today. Fucking love it here in Nottingham. It's posh, isn't it, George? Posh, yeah. How has it taken me two months to figure out the best way to display the hats is to hang them up by string. 
two months. hotel window this morning. The only downside to doing gigs at the Bodega is there is no loading. Uh, so I have to park my car in a multi-storey, nowhere near, and in the morning do a million trips. A million trips from the hotel room to the car, which, because we arrived yesterday, the car is on the very top floor of the car park, and I've got all my merch and guitars and everything to take, so I've got to do like, 15 tricks. <laughs> oh well, Bristol tonight, it's going to be amazing. It's ridiculous. Gotta go down the lift to cross the road, go up the lift, put stuff in the car, down the lift, cross the road, up in the lift, hotel room, and I've got to do all that five times. Up in the lift, in the car park. That's the second load. I was wrong, it's only four times I've got to do this, but still, I've been doing it now for 45 minutes. <laughs> Last time going up in this lift. Absolute bullshit waiting for those lifts. Client hotel, hundreds of rooms, one functioning lift. Bullshit. Well, that was a uh, frosty, uh, cold, but uneventful drive all the way down to Bristol. Stopped off at Blo uh, Gloucester, Gloucester? Gloucester Services, of course, for a Scotch egg. You know what I'm talking about, don't you, Barry Dolan? Uh, although he won't see this because he's not on my Patreon. Oh, hey, Chris Webb. Hello, Gaz Brickfield. <laughs> to the fleece in Bristol. 